Let's introduce the family of Gaussian vectors. So to start, a standard Gaussian random vector is just a random vector whose entries are independent Gaussian random variables, and they are standard in the sense that each of them has mean zero and variance one. So they're independent standard Gaussians. So we write this as a vector z, entries z1 through zm, where z1 through zm are independent, and each one of them is Gaussian 0, 1. And the shorthand notation for this is just to write the vector z with this little squiggle, which means distributed as, and then I write this script n, zero vector for the mean vector, and then identity matrix for the uh, covariance matrix. A jointly Gaussian random vector, we usually just say Gaussian random vector, that's a random vector that can be expressed as a linear transformation of a standard Gaussian random vector. And this is the same definition we saw before for jointly Gaussian random variables. You just take linear functions of standard ones. So I have my vector, and I can write it as a z plus b, where z is some standard Gaussian random vector that's really hiding in the background. And there's a matrix A of the correct size, and there's a vector B of the correct size. Usually what we do is instead of giving this linear transform, we would just tell you the mean vector mu of x and the covariance matrix uh, sigma of x. Okay, so those would be the two parameters you need to think about a Gaussian random vector. Some equivalent definitions that you might encounter from time to time, we're not going to really use these. Um, so x is a Gaussian random vector if for any choice of vector, so you pick a vector a, and then you take a transpose x, that should be a scalar Gaussian random variable. Okay, that's a different definition. You can also assume that this covariance matrix is invertible, then you could say a Gaussian random vector has the following joint PDF. So it's 1 over square root 2 pi to the n, the determinant of the covariance matrix, and then the exponent of e to the minus 1 half, and then the um, x minus its mean transpose times inverse covariance matrix times x minus its mean. Shorthand, we usually write, and this will happen a lot, we write x vector is distributed as, that squiggle, script n, so that's saying it's Gaussian with mean vector mu x and covariance matrix sigma x. So that's a nice uh, compact way of representing this. The most important property here is that linear transformations of Gaussian random vectors stay Gaussian. So they are themselves Gaussian random vectors. Specifically, if I have x, which is a Gaussian vector with mu x and covariance matrix sigma x, and I take this linear transform to get y, then I just get another Gaussian random vector for y, and I figure out the mean vector and covariance matrix via the linearity of expectation to get b mu x plus c, and covariance of a linear transform to get b sigma x b transpose. Okay, recall that uh, a pair of jointly Gaussian random variables, x and y, are independent if and only if their covariance is zero, or they're uncorrelated. Now, this is not true in general for random variables, but Gaussians are special, and covariance equals zero implies independence there. So for n Gaussians, so the entries of this Gaussian random vector, those are independent if and only if every covariance between the random variables in the vector is zero. Okay, so for every pair, we have covariance is zero. And this is equivalent to looking at the covariance matrix and checking if the matrix is diagonal. And the reason for that is if you write out the covariance matrix, which we defined on the previous slide, you'll notice that the variances appear on the diagonal and on the off diagonal, you have covariances. So those all have to be zero. Okay, and finally, if you're ever wondering for yourself, what does it mean for n variables to be jointly Gaussian? Well, it just means if you can put them together into a vector and they become a Gaussian vector, those are jointly Gaussian random variables. So we really talked here about n Gaussian random variables. Let's close out with an example. 
So let's say x is a Gaussian random vector, and a Gaussian random vector is specified by its mean vector and covariance matrix. So we're just going to give those to you. The mean vector is going to be mu x, which is um, 1, 0, minus 1 in this case. And the covariance matrix is going to be 3 by 3, because we see from the mean that we have three entries. So covariance is 3 by 3. It's going to be, in this case, 4, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, and 2. And you can notice this is symmetric. Okay. So let's say you take a linear transform to get y. So you have 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, times x plus 2, minus 1. So since it's a linear transform, then y is also a Gaussian random vector. All right. And the only thing to do is to figure out the parameters of this new Gaussian random vector. And those are just going to be, again, the mean vector and the covariance matrix. And that's the only thing you need to do if you're trying to figure out what happens to a Gaussian vector after a linear transformation. OK, and the way that we do that in this case is we're going to use the linearity of expectation. So we are just going to take um, the mean of y and say that that's going to be a times the mean of x plus b. OK, and what are a and b in this case? Well, it's 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1 times the mean of x, which is 1, 0 minus 1 plus 2 minus 1, and then that's going to be skipping the details to 1. So you can double check that for yourself after the video. And for the covariance matrix, we have this property that we um, learned a little bit earlier. So the covariance matrix of a linear transform, in this case, it's going to be the covariance matrix sigma of y. Well, I just get um, the matrix A times the covariance matrix of x times A transpose. Okay. And so that's like the matrix version of a squared. And so here I have 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1 times the covariance matrix of x. So I just write that out again. And I take the transpose of a. So I get a column, 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1. And if I kind of carry that through, I would ultimately find it's 5, 3, 3, and 5. Again, I skip the calculation. You can just do these in MATLAB. It's not um, something that we're super focused on.